Well, okay. I hope you are doing well all. Yeah. Uh, today we have a snowy day here in Freiburg, and uh, I can say a cold snowy day. And uh, we have another lecture on the topic of numerical simulation in metal forming. Our today's topic and also next week topic is about the wire drawing process which is a famous metal forming process to produce the wire as it's clearly seen from the name of the process and today we discuss about some background on wire drawing and some uh, uh, theoretical uh, background and also a little bit about the simulation of the process and next week uh, I can say that uh, we will try to simulate a process, a wire drawing process together uh, in Zimofact software of course uh, and uh, then obtain some result and then compare with the theoretical background of course you have not access to the Zemo fact maybe you don't you do not have the license for that but you 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 can install the abacus the uh, student version abacus our our example today our today example is uh, prepared by abacus but uh, i try to because i i i, I would like to uh, introduce you another software also beside uh, learning this simulation uh, next week I will try to prepare some example uh, using uh, Zimofact then you, you will be familiar a little bit with the interface of two software Abacus this week and Zimofact next week okay So as I said, uh, today we will have a short introduction on wire drawing process and then I will talk about the material flow in the process and some limits we have in wire drawing process and then uh, we, we go to the next step which is the theoretical consideration in wire drawing which is about, uh, which talks, talks about uh, two main approach uh, for the calculation uh, the theoretical calculation for the, for example, drawing force or uh, strain and other parameters, and uh, one of those two approaches, the uh, force equilibrium analyze. Uh, then uh, I will uh, go in detail for the force e equilibrium analysis, and then uh, I, I will try to uh, we will try to obtain to drive the equations together. Uh, uh, because I want uh, you become familiar with the equations because next week we will we will use the equations to compare the simulation and theory and uh, finally we will have an example of numerical simulation of wire drawing and then a summary okay let's have a look on the background of the wire drawing the historical background maybe it's interesting for you that the Egyptians were, were was the first nation who could draw wire. So in order to make fine gold thread, which they used it for the fibers in making some clothes or golden clothes or clothes from gold. The, uh, the evidence shows that in 1350 almost before Christ, they could do such a thing. It's really interesting. It's such a long time ago, and uh, what they have did is first they hammered the gold nuggets anyway with some tools and make a plate and sheet, and then they uh, cut the sheets into the narrow strips of silver or gold, and then they pulled the strip from a wire, a wire drawing die. The die was like a pebble. They could uh, make a hole in pebble, maybe with uh, some 
pointed stick using the sand and tallow to, for lubrication and then of course they could the, the form of the dice which uh, or the form of the pebble which were found uh, was like the deformation zone was like a venturi uh, zone it means that it was like similar to this the cross section so which is called the venturi form so they could they could okay this is the stone so they could uh, make fabricate such a die and then from one side this the gold strip and then pull it and from the other side the gold wire by pulling or drawing this is what they could do and uh, of course they use the, the lubricant for example tallow you know the fat from um, obtained from the animals and for lubrication and uh, then they could because the gold is very uh, formable then they could even uh, draw it from the other side using the finger or tongues which is another tool to pull the wires so and this figure shows a a strap chain which were find, found in the like almost 300 year before Christ maybe it was a golden belt and and it's really nice decorated so wire drawing has a long long story but we have a wire drawing machine in IMF our institute and of course we have a bar drawing machine because the wire drawing machine machine and bar drawing machine are the process is similar however the product is different in bar drawing the product is bar that size the diameter is a little bit higher but in the case of wire uh, you know that the, the wire is thinner and the product is something else however we have two, these two machines in our institute and the specification of the machines are given here what uh, how much is the drawing force the maximum drawing force how much is the starting diameter and uh, uh, how how would be the final diameter and drawing velocity and so that some other parameters and this figure shows uh, uh, industrial wire drawing equipment the, mo the modern one which are really compact these days and uh, here you can see that the wire drawing uh, it's not a single stage but it's a multiple stage sometimes 10 15 stage starting from a thicker or higher diameter to a thin wire or uh, with a smaller diameter so you can see here that on each stage the wire passes through the dies and then the, the diameter reduces and then again it's accumulated here and the next die and so on so okay we, we will talk about the detail of the process later just to introduce the machine of course you can find more pictures and even for more videos in YouTube if you want okay so how is the geometry of a wire drawing die okay as it's indicated here in this figure this is the deformation cavity here the wire with the initial diameter here di comes into the die and then this is the entrance zoom which we have no deformation where we have no deformation and then here this is the deformation zoom or the reduction or approach zoom where the deformation is applied and then we have a bearing zone here which okay the material is still in contact with die but not I can say that no no deformation is applied but the kind of uh, finishing on the surface is applied and then the exit zone that uh, the material is material goes out from the die so we have two 
important angle here the die angle which is really important because it's uh, one of the most important parameters for calculation in calculation of wire drawing and we have another angle here which is the relief or clearance angle this this angle of course is much more bigger this um, maybe 25 30 degrees and okay it's it's not important in the calculations of for example if you want to calculate the force it's not that much important and of course this is the final diameter and uh, what we have here uh, from the point of view of the stress state we have a compression of course a compression stress mm, but it's an indirect compression because okay as I introduced the process we apply some force here pulling force here but what happens here is a compression material is compressed here because of the form of the die this conical form so uh, we can say that we have an indirect compression state of stress here and usually uh, we have another process before wire drawing which which is named swaging process and uh, of course it's required because if when you when you want to start uh, the material should be able to pass through the die first at the beginning then you can uh, grab it grab the material here and pull it with uh, some mechanical tools or hydraulic tools whatever so at the beginning you need some a process which reduce the size of the uh, beginning of the, the product the wire so you can do it in switching machine as you can see here it's a kind of forging I can say so it start to forge the head of the uh, material and make it uh, thinner uh, uh, that it can pass through the die so after that you can put it in the die and pull it so on this is the geometry of the die and uh, uh, The, the important, important parameters, as I said, the die angle is important, alpha, in calculation. So we have the initial cross-section area, A0, and final cross-section area, AF. It's, it's important because we, can, we should be able to calculate the reduction of area using this formula. You know what's, what this formula. However, you can, uh, we have another uh, parameter which is named draft. The draft is just D0 minus DF simply and uh, it's used in industry usually but uh, in calculation we cannot use this uh, draft because uh, you know this is the base of the calculating the, the strain in metal forming so we usually use the reduction of area in our calculation not the draft but uh, of course the draft has some meaning but it's not usable in our calculation so the major process variable in drawing are similar to those in extrusion we have another process maybe you know what's that it's extrusion you push the material through the die in wire drawing you pull the material from the other side so the because of the similarity of the process these two process the variables are much more uh, more or less similar so we have reduction in cross-section area we discussed about it and we have the die angle and uh, we have the interface here between the die and material the, the surface which die is in contact with material and the drawing speed also the speed is important because uh, a strain rate is uh, defined by speed and uh, usually you know the materials behavior are strain rate dependent however today we will not discuss about that and we we will not bring it into our calculation because we need some a kind of simplification in equations so uh, this reduction of area can vary from 10 15 percent 
for the final stages and for the initial stages you can apply much more deformation uh, about uh, 45 or theoretically 50 percent reduction of area of course at the final stages because you need a more much more control on the uh, size and of course the final stages of drawing are cold so we cannot apply that much uh, uh, reduction of course wire drawing is cold process it means that the temperature uh, is uh, is not uh, is not uh, increased during the process however we have some annealing in between uh, to uh, remove the work hardening from the material and make it more deformable this figure shows a process chain of wire drawing for an unalloyed steel, a carbon steel. Of course, beside the drawing, which I talked about it uh, in last uh, previous slide, we, uh, as I said, we may have an annealing or heat treatment process in between, and of course uh, we may have a pickling because you know after heat treatment we have the scale problem on the surface and the surface should be clean because if the surface is not clean then the oxidation can embed it in the, uh, into the surface of the material and it degrades the quality of the surface so uh, as for example this is a change, uh, change process chain for wire drawing for unalloyed steel so it starts from the 5.5 uh, millimeter the diameter and then uh, the symbols are uh, introduced here then the testing process and then surface treatment which is the this pickling and then uh, the first uh, drawing uh, pro, uh, stage and then uh, again heat treatment and so on at the second stage and in between you have the heat treatment and the surface treatment and to the final diameter which is 0 0.15 millimeter which is a very small uh, diameter okay after this introduction let's talk about some limits on the material flow in wire drawing process okay we have three uh, we have uh, some uh, main influencing parameters on the material flow the initial condition of material is important of course it's annealed, it's work hardened or uh, how much is the formability of the material the drawing angle is a very important parameter as I said and the uh, uh, tribology of the surface the, or the friction is really important so when the friction is important so the lubrication is important because by lubrication you can reduce the applied friction but this curve it's uh, interesting uh, okay this axis is the drawing stress or drawing force like we can say simply and this axis shows the alpha alpha is the uh, die semi angle here let's see how affects uh, by uh, by increasing the uh, die semi angle what happens with the uh, drawing stress or drawing pool. okay at the beginning at the beginning by increasing the die angle this value this sigma f uh, sigma x or the drawing stress decreases up to here at this stage so we have a reduction of pulling stress here so anybody knows what's the reason okay I just assume that this this is we, we have assumed that, that this curve is for a constant reduction of area the reduction of area is constant so the d0 the ratio of d0 to the df or the final diameter is constant just the angle is changing the alpha is changing okay taking in, into consideration this point then anybody knows why this value decreases at the beginning 
by increasing the alpha or diasemi angle. Okay, at least send a no that I, I know that we are, we are still connected and you're following the lecture. No feedback? Okay, nobody knows and nobody sent me a feedback. I should, I, I cannot be sure that. Can you hear me still or not? Okay, so the reason is that, okay, when you increase the angle at the beginning, assuming that this uh, reduction of area is constant, uh, if the angle is so small, like here, so for example, because the final diameter is the same and the initial diameter is the same, if you decrease the angle, the surface uh, which the material is in contact with dye becomes bigger and bigger here by okay by decreasing the angle so when the surface is bigger you have more friction when the friction is higher then you need more pulling force so the reason for this reduction is uh, a reduction of the surface between the contact surface between the dye and material okay up to here and then we we up uh, we have here the optimum value of alpha okay and after that uh, by increasing the alpha then the pulling stress increases a little bit this area is because the force is minimal is uh, suitable for the wire drawing however we should take care about the uh, defect which is named the central burst defect which happens in this usually in this zone uh, later we will talk about this defect much more but then we should take care of it and uh, for example by lub lubrication or uh, surface treatment how you can uh, avoid this defect but after that uh, we, we reach to this plateau here which the force is constant by increasing the die angle because in this area we have a dead metal zone formed here in dead metal zone it's an area that the material will not move so whatever you increase the die this angle which material is flowing in this angle is not changing because this dead metal zone increases and increases but the, uh, the actual uh, uh, angle will not change so the force is constant up to this level which the angle is so sharp so big then you, you do not have any deformation but you have a shaving process so the material is like cut it from the surface in this way and because the force which is required for cutting is much more less than deformation then the force decreases here okay so I want to talk about this central uh, burst defect which is because it's really important in extrusion and in wire drawing because this uh, as the name shows that this defect is formed on the center of wire so when if you look in on, onto the produced wire you, you you think that it's a sound uh, uh, product and you cannot see the crack inside but if you do a x if you perform an x-ray then you can see some cracks are inside if the product is not produced well in an appropriate way sometimes we call this kind of uh, central burst the chevron or the cup and cone fracture in the middle and uh, so if if this if you have this kind of defects in the wire in the tensile test uh, of course it can be a lower 
uh, force uh, and it, it breaks, it, it fails sooner because of these cracks or in a fatigue test, it, you can see that the result will be different from a sound and a perfect product. So this, this figure comes from research and it shows, I can say it shows a, a process window. Here is the reduction ratio and here is the semi semicon angle or semi die angle here and uh, they have studied the wire drawing for three different material with, without strain hardening zero the beta is zero and then with smaller strain hardening and higher strain hardening so for example you can see that for a material without strain hardening this curve and up to this alpha equal to 15 degree uh, the chance of uh, uh, appearing this this kind of defect is very low but after that it may appear but uh, for this case for a, a material with a strain hardening coefficient of 0 0.05 then up to this value which is almost 35 degree it's safe but after that uh, you you may have this uh, central burst defect in on the center of the product so it's important it's uh, very famous and important however it's possible to predict the central burst defect and you can see it's we we have done this uh, simulation for a company and it's i mean it's not a, a academic simulation but it's a professional simulation so you can see that the simulation can show the formation of the this kind of defect even you can see that the material is failed here because of this chevron type defect of course it's not a uh, simple uh, a simulation because you have to give the damage model uh, which i think in this one was the uh, cockroft model and then uh, the software will be able to predict this formation of these center burst defects and these are the parameters for the process the alpha the reduction of area and the friction coefficient okay and uh, uh, we will talk about the, uh, the uh, different different approaches for uh, theoretical calculation in wire drawing one of the approaches is a slip line field or a slip shear field uh, if you uh, we will not talk about the, this this approach to the, too much today because it's a very long story but it's a, uh, the, there is a book written by Avitzer and this method for the extrusion and wire drawing this method of calculation is explained there and the equations are derived in the in that book so you can refer to the book if you are interested to know how is the base of the calculation and finally for example this is one of the equation which uh, derived by Avitzer uh, it can calculate the uh, relative effective strain versus distance from center it means that okay at center at the center this value, this relative effective strain value, this value is almost one, which means that uh, no strain is applied in the center after, after wire drawing. However, uh, by moving from the center to the surface, by moving from the center to the surface, this value uh, reaches to one, and then uh, you can see that uh, the effective uh, applied effective strain increases and increases so uh, this is the first homework for you and uh, using the excel you can obtain this graph from this equation using the excel so uh, in this homework number one you should replot this curve using this equation by giving different uh, ratio of uh, r to rf or the, the different distance from the surface and obtain this value using the equation and plot the curve and see uh, of course you will obtain something very similar to this uh, 
flat. Okay, now before starting talk about the force equilibrium, uh, in one two slide I will talk about the theoretical consideration in wire drawing and the different approaches we have for the theoretical uh, calculation. The theoretical analysis for the wire drawing or of course the cold uh, drawing or wire drawing process is divided into two main categories. Uh, it's okay, it's better to say wire drawing because we have another process which is drawing a sheet metal forming if you want to produce such a cup form from a sheet okay then it, it, it this is this is also named the uh, uh, drawing process so to be more precise it's better to call it wire drawing so we have two two approach one is based on the force equilibrium analysis and the other is based on the energy analysis of course the force equilibrium analysis is uh, older uh, historically it's older and but this energy analysis is more comprehensive and uh, more much more aspects are included in the equations uh, the equilibrium analysis is uh, is relatively simple compared to the uh, energy approach and uh, however it's usable for the experimental and industrial cases still the equations which are derived from this approach are used in the industry to estimate and to understand the process and to estimate some parameters uh, because it uh, okay in this approach in the force equilibrium analysis you can apply the yield stress and the coefficient uh, of friction is in, is included in the equation so you can obtain some uh, simple result however we do not consider the re redundant work and what is the redundant work? The work which is not essential to the change of the shape. It means that all the work you are applying on the material, it's not essential for the deformation. However, in the approach of equilibrium analysis, uh, we assume that all the applied work is consumed for the deformation. That is not, which this is not as, uh, true which this is not a true assumption but we, we have to assume, assume in this way because we have no way because we are not uh, applying the energy equation but it's just the force e equilibrium and the other is that the planes initially perpendicular to the drawing axis remains normal to it throughout the deformation this is not also a right assumption it's just an assumption because uh, of course it will not remain perpendicular during the deformation however if the applied deformation is not applied uh, deformation or reduction of area is not too big and then you can assume in this way and the final assumption is that friction is constant and the material does not show the work hardening behavior and okay in the case of uh, friction is constant okay we can accept it but this one you know that many materials uh, in most of the metals and alloys show, show this behavior of work hardening so i can say all of them so it's not again a, a good assumption but okay we have to assume in this way how okay on the other side we have the uh, energy approach which uh, in this approach we, we uh, put equal the internal work and the external work to up to drive the equations okay this is more logic and this is much more better so we have the different approaches to solve this this type of equation uh, one is the a shear line field or slip line field method this is what uh, Abitzer used in his book as I said before and uh, this is the first method the other method is using the numerical uh, energy method uh, using finite element technique which okay recently uh, we are able to do this this is the another approach and the third approach is a numerical method which is which traces the path and the 
distortion of elements throughout the deformation zone. So in these two approaches are the numerical approaches, which uh, are the new, newest method. However, uh, we have the slip line field method, which were used by Avitzer, and it's an older method, but the results are much more reliable compared to the equation uh, derived from uh, uh, der der um, obtained from the force equilibrium analysis. This is the big picture. So now you know that we, we can obtain the equation from the force equilibrium analysis and the energy equi uh, equation. However, as I said, I will not go on the second category, but I will talk about the force equilibrium analysis, and uh, I, will, I, I will try. We will try to obtain the equations together with you, uh, because you need to understand how the equations are obtained. Because next week we will come, we will compare the result of this kind of equation with the simulation. Okay. First, uh, let's determine the parameters we have for writing the uh, uh, equilibrium equations. Okay, as you can see, this is a cavity of the deformation zone for wire drawing process, and we can we consider this element here in in the middle. And then this is D1 and uh, the, the final uh, diameter D2 and then we have sigma x which is the pulling force and then uh, on the other side sigma x pl plus D sigma x and uh, on the uh, radial direction we have sigma r and uh, external force P is applied here normal to the surface and for the uh, friction we have mu P here so I think I have introduced all the internal and external applied forces okay let's go and try to write the uh, equations uh, for horizontal equilibrium for horizontal equilibrium uh, we have this sigma x applied here and uh, sigma x plus d sigma x here so we have to, mul uh, to multiply this sigma value with the surface uh, which is applied on so this is the uh, surface here on the circular cross section and this is the surface here then this is the force equilibrium and uh, for the external force on this element for the external force here uh, on the, on the uh, like x direction okay uh, I, I forgot to say that we, we assume this direction and like in this is positive and positive so uh, the other uh, component will be considered as the negative components okay for uh, external forces this P has two uh, components this horizontal components here because we are writing the horizontal equilibrium then we consider it in this way we have P and then the surface here calculated and alpha is included because this alpha is important and then uh, mm -hmm. the component for uh, this to find this horizontal component is sin alpha and uh, okay so for and so uh, another uh, component this is here and the, the other component comes from the friction so, so to calculate this one for the friction again we have a similar calculation but now because it's friction then mu is included here okay and because it's for the friction we want the, the we up, uh, we need the vertical 
the normal force, then this is the cosine. So the finally, if you bring these two together and put it zero to obtain the equation, then you can obtain this equation for the horizontal equilibrium. Okay, for now for radial equilibrium in the in this direction, in our direction, because we are solving the problem in the cylindrical uh, coordinate. So in radial equation for the internal uh, forces, we have sigma R P D D X. This is this is the surface, uh, the area of the surface here, and the sigma R, which is applied in the negative, which is it's compressive force, and it's negative here based on this uh, assumption, and then. Uh, the other parameters again comes from the friction this this uh, component has also some effects on friction then you can calculate similarly for the friction and uh, on the surface again you can put these two uh, term together and put it equal to zero and then you can obtain such equation and as the mu value is a small, it's usually it's 0 0.05, 0 0.034 because of lubrication in wire drawing then. And also the alpha value uh, is not too big, for example, 10 degrees. And then we can assume that the alpha is small and the mu is very small. So we can simplify this equation into this form, simply sigma r equal to minus p. And okay, so we have uh, this equation and uh, by applying the Tresca or uh, uh, von Mises, both in 2D on this equation, then it, it becomes in this form. This is the new equation. This is the equation from the equilibrium in X direction. This is in radial direction. And uh, to make it simple, we uh, assume that mu uh, cotangent alpha is equal to B put these three together, you can drive this equation, which is the final equation for calculating the uh, drawing pool, uh, 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 drawing force or pooling force, okay? So, okay, then we have to integrate and this equation because it's a differential equation then we have to integrate on both sides and then uh, as we do not have the a pullback stress on here so on this surface we can apply the boundary condition and uh, which is the sigma x is zero then you can obtain the c value and put it back here after integration and we, if you put it back here in the, into this equation then you can drive this equation in this form. Okay, to make it more practical, we put this R value as uh, with this definition, and then these two equation, you, this this one you can obtain from the definition of the uh, cross section reduction, and then put all these three together. This is the final equation. This is the final equation for calculating the. Uh, drawing force or sigma x2 in this direction okay this is the second homework for you because next week we want to compare the result of this equation with the simulations how how much uh, drawing force is calculated using this uh, equ simple equation and how much will be calculated using a uh, numerical simulation then you have prepared an Excel file which can calculate uh, the drawing force or drawing stress by giving uh, for, uh, the main parameters like the yield stress of material, uh, the uh, mu uh, coefficient of friction, the reduction of area or D0, D1, 
D1, D2 and uh, what else and uh, and of course alpha alpha is included so alpha mu r or d1 d2 and yield stress these four five should be given so you can prepare an excel file and so next week we can we can do it together you can give the value to your excel file and calculate it immediately and then we can uh, check it and compare it with the com uh, simulation result. Okay, and uh, the last homework for today is uh, okay. You you should be using these equations I explained, uh, especially using this equation. Uh, you should be able to calculate the idle limit. Or the maximum reduction of area I you can uh, obtain in an uh, axisymmetric wire drawing idle it means that uh, you have uh, no uh, friction and uh, then uh, and uh, you should uh, note that you can apply the maximum uh, uh, pulling uh, stress which is not bigger than the yield stress why applying these two conditions on that equation then you can you can obtain this value so uh, I ask you to do the calculation and obtain this value 63% reduction of area maximum or uh, this is the limit the maximum and in another case you can apply the mu this value and the alpha equal to 15 and then you, you will obtain another value which is of course smaller than this and uh, but it's bigger than 50 so it's something between 50 and 63 because in practice this value uh, rarely uh, is above uh, 50 or I can say which is above is above uh, 45 percent because uh, in practice because of some imperfections on the surface and workpiece and processes and some other uh, uh, problems in the products you cannot apply more than this 50% or even 45% even in at the initial stage of wire drawing okay so what we have obtained up to here is for a wire drawing process without pullback however because when we were calculating this c value constant value in this equation after integrating after integration and by applying the boundary condition sigma x equal to zero we obtain this c value but if you have the pull back pull it means that uh, you are pulling the uh, wire from one side but there is one force on the other side uh, which usually we have such a force because uh, the wire in in practice it's like okay it's on this on this stand and then it comes to the die here and then goes out to the next stand and then like this so this accumulation of wire here applies some back pull so you have a back pull here and you have a drawing uh, force here so if you have these both two together then you cannot assume this value is zero but you can give some value for that so a new c is calculated in this way if you go back to the equation you can calculate this for a case that you have a back pool and if you put this value into the equation again then the complete equation will be in this form complete means this equation consider the uh, back pull force this is the term appeared because of the back pull in the equation uh, okay before the equation was in this form now this uh, final term is added because of the applying the back pull and then if you apply the yield criterion then finally you can write it in this way Okay, I think we, we talked about the theoretical background uh, uh, and it's enough for now.
Okay, let's go to the next chapter of the lecture, which is uh, the simulation of a new numerical simulation of a wire drawing process. Okay, I uh, we have simulated a simple wire drawing process uh, under and we have applied two. We, we have changed two main parameters. For the process, drawing angles for 10, 30, and 50 degrees, and deformation degree or the reduction, reduction, reduction of area for 15 percent and 30 percent. So uh, totally, we had six case of simulation here. The geometry of the simulation is like this no swaging is applied for the simulation because in simulation uh, of course you uh, it's not important you can uh, even merge this uh, wire drawing and simulation together and you can pull it and this uh, corners shapes and it's like it will be like similar to swaging not not exactly but similar so this is the f initial form of the sample and okay let's run some uh, simulation of course i do not run it here but i check the result here and maybe we can uh, extract some meaningful result from the simulation of course here we assume that the die is fixed and rigid it means that die does not move of course in practice it, it, uh, it does not move also and uh, it's rigid means that it's there is no deformation on the die however in practice we have some elastic deformation on the die but usually as I said before in the simulation in metal formings we assume the die is rigid except in the case that uh, <coughs> we need to study the elastic behavior of material for example if you want to study the spring back which is uh, directly related to the elastic behavior or elastic deformation then you should consider this uh, even elastic deformation of the die and in some uh, other process you you cannot assume the die rigid however overall we can assume it okay for the simulation, first step is giving the material properties. So we, we run this simulation on copper, pure copper. So we need some mechanical properties and some physical properties for the calculation. Just as for the reference, where we, this is a stress strain curve for the copper from this research. So we use this data and we gave the data uh, using okay at this strain rate as a con at a constant strain rate this one and uh, so we we give the flow behavior of material from this cap of course from here forward not here because here is the elastic area so you can obtain just the uh, model of elasticity here that it, it, it is used in the calculation but and from this point on we can obtain the flow behavior and uh, as the, our calculation are not a strain rate dependent so we just choose a constant strain rate so this is the interface of the software if you use your student license of Abacus when you want to give the material properties then simply you have for example give the density and then the, for the elastic properties you have to give the uh, you should give the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio two important parameters for the elastic calculation of course we have some options here that uh, the material is isotropic is not anisotropic uh, however if you your material is anisotropic then you can, you can change this bottom and then some other options will be open here to give the data and uh, 
it's not it's not temperature dependent the elastic the young modulus is not temp temperature dependent but however sometimes it's temperature dependent in your simulation then you can turn it on and then yeah one column more column you, you will have here for temperature so you can give the value for different temperature here and the important thing is that all the units should be in SI and uh, if it's if it's meter kilogram and then it should be kept for any any uh, given value and this is this is a very common mistake because especially in abacus the numbers has no unit here the next week we will check the simo file you can see that the unit is written here there in some other uh, software but in abacus there is no unit so you should keep uh, the coherency by yourself so all the units should be coherent with each other if no then it gives a very the simulation gives a very uh, odd uh, result okay so for flow behavior then as i said using this data we start from this data and this curve and the values of the flow stress for the plastic deformation of course are given when the plastic strain is changing using this value and of course e even and uh, also here you have to option for the strain rate dependent and the temperature rate dependent a strain rate dependent of okay assume that your material is a strain rate dependent then you should give all these three curves for the three different strain rate then if you turn it on one column here appears which is for strain rate then you should give all the data and if you have the flow curves for different temperatures for, for example for another temperature here or another temperature here then you can turn the temperature dependent option on and then one column for the temperature appears here so then you can give a full matrix of yield stress plastic strain and then the strain rate and temperature okay this is for material properties and then uh, in Abacus especially, not, not in other software like ZimoFact and Deform, no, not, but in Abacus you should make a, uh, uh, create a section, then you allocate the uh, given material property to the section and then apply the section on, the, on your uh, uh, given geometry. So this is the geometry we have, give, we have given for the initial workpiece and this is the Axis of asymmetry here because it's an asymmetry uh, simulation. Of course, this the type of cross section. It's homogeneous because it's not uh, in plane strength condition. It's not a composite and it's not an uh, Eulerian section. If you remember, we talked about this Lagrangian and Eulerian. Uh, calculation before so it's related to the type of mesh we use in Eulerian the mesh are constant so it usually used for the fluid dynamic problems but in Lagrangian the mesh are not fixed and the remeshing can happen this is the option you, we usually have in metal forming problems so in metal forming problems we do not use this Eulerian uh, <coughs> Eulerian uh, cross section. We do not apply it. Okay. So, and then another important thing is the mesh size or the element size. In this case, in for this study, for this uh, simulations, we have applied four different mesh sizes from three millimeter. 3 millimeter in 3 millimeter in, in two direction and then 1 in 1 0 0.5 in 0 0.5 and then 0 0.3 in 0 0.3 and here are the, are the information uh, about the type of the element okay the 
A4, this is the number of the, the type of element A4, this is the way that uh, Abacus show, uh, defines the different type of uh, uh, mesh meshing system which is available in the database so A4 is a bilinear asymmetry uh, quadrilateral and some other numerical parameters some the re radius integration and hourglass control these options are usually uh, choose automatically however not not this one this one you should use based on your problem because our problem uh, is a 2d and then asymmetry and then it's a simple geometry then you can use this uh, quadra uh, quadrilateral uh, mesh to mesh it but if it becomes complicated not not in wire drawing but for example in forging then you should use the this option for example the trilateral okay so okay we want to talk about the effect of the mesh size let's go to the next slide and see what's the effect of mesh size we have a uh, one of uh, this 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 slide compares the the uh, simulation results for one of the simulation case okay here uh, the reduction of area is 30% However, I think the alpha is not given here and maybe alpha is 10 or 15 one of those two just for a single case We run the simulation with all these four mesh sizes from 3 millimeter to 0 0.3 Even if you look into the graph, you can see that here is a very rough simulation and uh, <coughs> But when we increase the uh, we, when we decrease the mesh size then it becomes the result becomes better but still it's a kind of average here is not exact here but when we decrease it to 0 0.5 it becomes more exact and then you can see that the stress value on the surface is like the tensile stress and on the in the middle is compressive stress and then this is what we expect and the most important things is that of course we know that by increasing the mesh by decreasing the mesh size or increasing the mesh uh, number of mesh the accuracy of the result will increases this is yeah definitely it happens but the question is that which size which mesh size is appropriate okay you can compare these two and okay here by decreasing from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 the result is not changing that much okay so in, a, in another word I can say that now the result is converged uh, 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 versus the mesh size this uh, convergence is very important this convergence is very important uh, any simulation you run for uh, for example for publication in a journal you should study this mesh size effect and obtain which mesh size effect is enough for your calculation and uh, uh, after that your result will not be affected uh, with the mesh size that much be this is important because for example from this 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 maybe the time of your simulation increases for many hours because you are then increasing the number of elements so more calculation so more time you are, you you require you more time is required so of course you can put it for example 0 0.05 and then you should wait for 3 4 days for your result but when you obtain the result is not much more different from this from this 0 0.5 that's why this is important so at the beginning of your simulation uh, study you should obtain the appropriate mesh size and then continue with that here you can compare the result this is this is from the rough simulation okay it's almost giving an average value this is the uh, drawing force or the uh, uh, long longitudinal uh, stress s22 here in drawing in this direction so 
if their mesh is rough then it's giving i can say it's giving a average value then when you decrease the size of mesh then it becomes more precise and then these two for 0 0.5 and 0 0.3 it's they are almost similar a very small difference between these two so we can say that this 0 0.5 is enough for this study and we can proceed with this uh, size of mesh okay and uh, let's compare the result for the uh, other parameters which is the this is S3.3 the hoop stress here the hoop stress then if you compare the if you check the effect of mesh size you can see a similar behavior with the longitudinal stress here and uh, of course this is for the effective st stress or uh, effective strain or uh, yeah this effective strain this is effective strain here so this change of result is seen in both in even in hoop stress and in effective strain value so again you can see the effect of mesh size on your simulation okay after finalizing the mesh size now we can study the effect of some parameters okay we have two main parameters in this uh, simulation of course all of this these simulations are frictionless so the mu value the friction the co uh, coefficient of friction is zero of course it's not correct but for simplification this is what uh, we have assumed in our simulation but we have two parameters which that we can play with then this is one is the reduction of area and the other is the semi angle or alpha so under the constant mesh system uh, we run the simulation for all these six cases and now you can compare this is the hoop stress and it's interesting if you compare this 50% uh, reduction with the same angle for, I mean for the uh, 10 degree angle with this one with 30 percent you can see that here you have the forging cross it's like it's it's it happens in, in even in upsetting if you have an upsetting sample then this forging cross appears if you put the force like this for upsetting so it shows that something similar is happening here this appear, uh, appear in this cross it means that uh, you have a uh, compression or as I said it's an indirect compression state of stress here but it's more interesting that if you compare you can see that here okay this red red area is the tensile stress here and the blue is the compress compressive okay on the surface is compressive here here it's not that much tensile stress is still compressive compressive but for the case of 15% of reduction of area you can see that it's a kind it's a tensile stress applied in the middle and by increasing the uh, dice semi angle you can see that this value is increased and increased and you know that the tensile stress okay under the compression stress you the cracks or the, the defects will not appear but in the case of tensile stress yes it appears so that could this could be the source of that uh, uh, defect we called it as a chiffron or a central burst defect this tensile stress on the center line okay again we can compare the longitudinal stress in this direction sigma 2 2 or s 2 2 here or sigma 2 in this direction 
the applied stress in this direction again it's uh, different six cases we have in simulation and for this parameter we can clearly see that here we have the risk of <coughs> and possibility of uh, a central burst defect it can appear here uh, however still we cannot judge about it okay we can see that here the, the longitudinal stress is tensile here and here in the middle but how we can judge it is it more than the yield stress of material or not or it, the, it, does it uh, uh, cause uh, the central burst defect or not if you want to judge it uh, in accurate way then as you should apply the damage model which consider damage model consider different components of the stress and then based on the equation uh, for the, you you are giving for the damage for example the Cockcroft equation or the others uh, this other type of <coughs> criterion for the damage then you can judge however simply you can judge based on the shear stress this uh, simulation shows uh, predicts the shear stress in different cases we have and uh, okay we know that the shear stress of copper is 150 megapascal however you can see in these cases especially here here you can see that the value is 177 megapascal so it's above the shear stress so we can say that okay so definitely that uh, central burst defect will appear but you know the shear when shear stress is more than the shear stress of copper yes it definitely definitely appears but if the shear stress is less than the shear strength of copper uh, we cannot say that definitely it does not appear because not only the shear stress but also the, no the normal stress uh, influence the damage so both this normal and shear uh, uh, components should be considered for the damage model that's why we should use a damage model which brings the normal stress and shear stress both together to calculate some damage factor and predict the damage model okay and uh, then yeah, this figure you can compare the distribution of equivalent, uh, equivalent plastic strain or effective strain PEQ this is the uh, name it's given for uh, uh, effective strain in uh, uh, abacus then uh, we compare it in four different zones the number zone number one is here and uh, for this amount of reduction and the, okay the drawing angle is 30 it's fixed the uh, angle and the reduction of area is fixed and then you can see that here your graph is this is a green one so not too much uh, effective strain is applied because it's not it's at the beginning of the deformation zone however on zone number two it's much more higher here and number zoom number three and zoom number four these all th these all three are overlapping here all are located here because you know that in here is in the landing area we have no deformation and then out of the die we have no deformation so when the deformation finishes here then this value remains constant and okay in the surface in in, in the mid in the center line the value is less and then by moving to the surface the applied strain increases and then the maximum is not located exactly on the surface but a little bit below the surface almost one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter 
okay and uh, okay this uh, as I said this uh, results are obtained uh, using abacus and I think you know that there is a club for abacus and uh, uh, you can be in contact with uh, Mr. Faraji and then uh, they, uh, he has some uh, videos and some uh, uh, tutorials for the guys who are interested in uh, learning abacus of course you can download the student version uh, in the student version you have just the limitation of number of mesh so you cannot increase the number of mesh that much so you can just run the rough simulation however it's enough for learning it's enough for learning abacus so if you are interested then you can contact him and then i don't know the, uh, he has uh, some online uh, tutorial teaching classes or some recorded video then because of corona i don't know what's the situation and so okay this is for abacus and next week for zimofact we will uh, try some simulation in zimofact and i i'll try to do it online with you during the class so then you can see what's the uh, real uh, procedure for a simulation from the beginning to the end and of course we will compare the result of the simulation with uh, theoretical calculation and the equilibrium equations okay uh, it's enough for today and uh, oh I think we have covered what uh, we want for this lecture uh, is there any question on the topics So I'm waiting for, okay. Okay, for homeworks. Okay, I should go back to the slides. Homework number. Where was that number one? Okay, for the home, okay, for the homework number one. Okay, this is the Abitzer equation for calculating the strain degree, this value by changing the uh, distance from the center this ratio is exactly this one but this is here is ra this radius this is diameter but okay same and then uh, this value sigma uh, phi r to phi zero this is the relative effective strain this value obtained and then you can uh, change the alpha from 0 and then to 90 so you should uh, you should uh, implement this equation in Excel first and then start to calculate for 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 example for different uh, semi angle die semi angle and then for different uh, distance from center so you can obtain the data point and you can plot each curve Okay, I ask you to plot, replot this curve using this equation just to understand the effect, understand the effect of parameters. This is the homework number one. Okay, number one is clear. Then uh, I hope that it's clear. Okay, number two, it's same. I, I, I ask you to implement this equation in Excel this time to calculate the pooling force. This is sigma x2 is the pooling force. So because next week we want to uh, compare the, the results we can obtain from this equation with the simulations. So then you should be able to change the uh, reduction of area, to change the yield stress, to change the uh, alpha immediately using your file. So 
you should implement this equation in Excel and uh, in the way that by changing four uh, or five main parameter D1, D2 or R the first parameter alpha second parameter mu third parameter and y the yield the stress the fourth parameter by changing these four you can obtain the result and at the same time i will do that and then we run the simulation and then we can compare this is the homework number two and homework number three this is okay uh, what is clearly written here that you should obtain the maximum reduction of area in idle condition so as I said you should use this equation you should use this equation but in idle condition it means that mu is zero and then and the other condition is that uh, of course the uh, pulling force or pulling stress you are applying should not be more than the yield stress of the material okay using these two assumptions you should be able to obtain where is it Oops. you should be able to obtain this 63 percent the idle value and the next this, this uh, next part is give the mu as 0 0.05 and the alpha degree 15 and then again some value you, uh, you will obtain another value something percent which is uh, below 63 and but it's above the 50 and this is the third Okay, so uh, if there is not any other question, then I close this lecture and see you next week for continuing the lecture on wire drawing simulation. Bye.